For this edition of Mama, I Made It, I'm joined in studio by Wandile Mamaso. Wandile is head chef and owner at Le Cretis Restaurant. Now, Le Cretis Restaurant is a place where fine dining meets world-class wine lists, cocktails, visual art and ceramic art, all in an inclusive dining space. How innovative. Welcome, chef. Thank you for having me. I thought you'd, you'd come in with a, a plate in hand and say, Madame. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you'd have to come to the creatives to, to actually experience that. The entire dining experience. Yeah. I'm quite fascinated by the fact that you, you chose a French name. Yeah. Uh, yes, I know we, we are all quite au fait with French cuisine and, and how you know, famous it is around the world. But for you, why the choice of Le Creatives as the name of a restaurant in yeah. South Africa? Yeah, well, I mean, Le Creatives uh, is in French, but in English it actually means the creatives. Um, why French? Uh, my background in cooking is from uh, French cuisine, so I have classical training in French cuisine and I just came back about two years ago from uh, uh, France where I was working in Paris as well. So my cuisine is well rooted uh, in, in French cuisine. Let's perhaps backtrack a little bit um, and get into your entry point, into your love of the culinary. Yeah. When did you decide that this is something that you're so passionate about that you're actually going to pursue it as your life's work? Yeah, so I mean, I started cooking probably at the age of nine years old. Um, Were you forced? Uh, not really, but um, you know, we, we had a single mother, myself and my brother, so she was always working late hours, so we'd come back from school and we'd literally have to make a plan. You know, you can't eat sandwiches every day. No, you can't. So at times you get <laughs> bored of it and then you start, I mean, we started off with rice and then eggs and then before you know it, at age 15, 16, I was already cooking for like Sunday lunches for family. Um, so when it hit uh, the age of 18 in high school where you decide what you're going to do with your life, that's when it, it was clear that I have to take this route and I've been in the industry since. And what was the response uh, from your mom? I mean, at that point, was being a chef uh, viewed as a viable career? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really difficult um, to a point where, you know, I sometimes ask myself how I actually got into it, like really into it, because back then it wasn't uh, like today. There was no TV network shows, there was no celebrity chefs. I didn't know any chef at all. Literally, the only chef I saw on TV was Jamie Oliver. You know, so it was, it was difficult. It wasn't a, a career for black people and also, most importantly, men. So my mother understood, but my dad was reluctant. Uh, so I ended up studying hotel management. Uh, and after my hotel management, eventually, I then did my culinary degree as well. But the response wasn't so good. I mean, things have changed now. It's become very popular. Um, it's become trendy, you know. It's sort of cool to be a chef. It's a hip thing, so. Especially with celebrity chefs, um, yeah. you know, that just makes it look like such a glamorous career. You know, yeah. there's, there's passion in the, in the kitchen and there's lights, camera, action, and, 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 you know, cooking for the who's who's of the world. Yeah. But your background in, in hotel management, yeah. have you found that to be quite useful for you now as a chef who runs his own restaurant? Um, yes, it, it, it is useful. I mean, it's, a, it's just a base, literally, you know, and obviously after studying the hotel degree, I then went to work in a few hotels, um, which did show me a bit of the industry, the realities of the industry and the diversity in, in hotels. You know, you can be a food and beverage manager, you can be a housekeeping manager, you can be in the background, or you can be a chef in the kitchen. So yes, it did help in a way. So this culinary degree, is that the one that you went to France for, or did you do that in South Africa? No, that I did in South Africa. So after the hotel management, I did my internship uh, in Italy for about a year. And then I came back and uh, had to do my culinary degree and uh, literally just before I finished, there were scouts from uh, the U.S. who then scouted, if, uh, actually I was the only one in the school, uh, to go work in Miami. So literally about three months before I finished, I went to go work in Miami. So, and I spent about 12 years, so from Miami to New York and uh, five, five years in New York, where I actually received classical training in French cuisine in New York. And then after five years in New York, I ended up in Paris. Uh, so it's about 10 to 12 years in total, and I've just come back two years ago. 
And how does one afford to do all of that? It sounds awfully glamorous from Paris to Italy to, to Miami. And I'm wondering, you know, how much all of that would cost and how did you manage to raise that money? So, I mean, it, it does sound glamorous, but trust me, there's nothing glamorous about it. Uh, there's a lot of work involved, um, uh, especially the type of establishments that, that I worked in. Um, but in terms of getting the money to do that, uh, there is no capital, really. You know, so for me, I've always been an entrepreneur um, and a creative, uh, and like at heart. So I've always found a way to sort of make things work or make a plan or, or just, you know, sort of like create an equation where you can get to the final solution. Um, and sometimes money is not involved. It's just a matter of making connections, trying this out, risking that. Um, because I'll tell you, even when I moved to New York, I literally, from Miami to New York, I had $500 in my pocket. So I stayed in a hostel with like seven guys um, with bunk beds, um, you know, to a point where I literally almost was homeless. You know, I was looking for a place to stay. I was literally knocking from door to door in the best French restaurants. So it isn't that glamorous. There's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work um, involved in it. Um, and it's just, it's just hustling, you know, with, uh, from nothing, from $500 to, in five years, being an executive sous chef in, in a city like New York. And I guess that is the story uh, that a lot of successful people will share with you. The fact that you really have to lay the groundwork, yeah. that you've got to pay your dues, that your foundation has to be very solid. But now here you are. Yep. owner and head chef of Le Creatif's restaurant. Yes. Uh, what is it that, that inspired uh, that concept of having art as yep. the soul of the, the restaurant? Okay. So, yes, I mean, Le Creatif's, for me, uh, it's, the, it's the best looking restaurant in the city or in the country. It's the most stylish and most creative. Um, but the, the concept behind it was because I'm an artist um, by nature, you know, I love, I love art, I love to draw, I love creativity, I love to build things, I love to collaborate with other artists. So the idea was to uh, collaborate with as many artists, craftsmen, uh, visionaries, uh, some of the best in the country, as many as possible, just to create um, sort of like a synergy in, in the restaurant that, that has a multi-sensory experience. So with that being said, we've got a gentleman by the name of Donald Nomalo, a very talented interior designer. He literally transformed the space. Um, you know, according to my, uh, my uh, point of view and also the food that we create, we literally spend three months back and forth, uh, me going to the studio, him coming to eat my food, just talking and literally bouncing back ideas. And he transformed the space to something incredible. Um, and also to support local artists, um, we've partnered up with the Queen of Art, uh, who's Louis Shezi. She's an art director, art uh, uh, manager. She manages artists as well. So we decided to kit the whole place up with art, uh, big pieces, small pieces, but local artists, where the art is also for sale in, in, in the premises, um, which is great. It supports the artist as well, and we get to collaborate. It gets to put their they actual work um, in, in a different environment than having it in a studio. And actually the first three months we sold about three pieces. We were selling more than an art gallery. So we've also got plates uh, uh, with Andy Lengyalvane from Imiso, which uh, it's our plates, they're on the market as well. So we, it's handmade, hand painted in Cape Town. So there's just a long list of really creatives that are involved within the space, you know, just to give you that whole outcome. It's probably quite an innovative model for, mu uh, you know, for, for galleries and art galleries to, to integrate because yeah. ultimately it's about getting feet uh, through the door. Yes. And you know, people come to the restaurant because they, they want to eat, but sometimes you may find that they're not the natural consumers or buyers of art. Yes. But while they're in that space, the entire sense, uh, you know, uh, sensory experience you know, stimulates them to be able to appreciate yes. and then acquire um, a piece of art. Yeah, definitely. I think it's, it's, it's an incredible platform for artists um, in a sense where, I mean, when I approach the artist, I told them, I'm like, uh, you, you can't be thinking uh, your tunnel vision where it takes you six months to create a piece and then you're going to wait for a gallery to take it and then you're going to wait for somebody to buy it in the gallery and the gallery probably takes about 60% of, of the revenue. 
So it's, it's a different platform in a sense where you can literally have 40 people sitting at the restaurant staring at your art for a whole three hours until that they literally fall in love with that art. And when they pay the bill for their food, they literally pay the bill with purchasing the arts as well, you know, so which is something incredible, I think. Let's talk about your food because your, your dishes are an art in themselves. Um, you know, just watching the, 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 the fish being seared in, you know, in the frying pan and just watching the decor and the arrangements of, of your dishes. What is your favorite dish? Wow. Um, that is a very hard question. And I, <laughs> I don't think I'm the right guy to ask that question because... All of them. Um, yeah, because, you know... I think within the space of two years, I've literally created probably more than 500 dishes. Um, before, we used to change the menu every day. Now, at Le Creatives, we change the menu um, uh, every week. Um, and the idea, I mean, the, I've worked in Michelin star restaurants. I've trained with some of the best. So I do have the formula of what works in terms of food and what to give to people. And I could have come back and said, okay, I'm going to take a concept from New York or from Paris and copy and paste it and say, this is what we're working with. We will be the best. We'll win awards, definitely. But it's not what we are trying to do. So we are trying to push creativity. We are trying to literally go into a territory that's unknown. You know? And it's important, I think, for me as well as a chef to grow um, and not to feel like, okay, I've attained all of this uh, experience and qualification. Now I've made it. And and just be reluctant you know so we want to push boundaries we want to push myself as well to keep learning keep growing and i think somewhere along the line we will come across something very interesting and, and game changing and probably revolutionary we'll, we'll talk about the intricacies of, of running a business and actually making sure that books balance uh, when do you reach you know a break even etc but let's take a really quick break we'll be back uh, just after this and do remember that you can engage with us on social media ask whatever questions you want to ask and, and tell us uh, what you think our official handle is at 405 business underscore and our hashtag is hashtag business unusual